What's going on guys? You know the vibes. Happy Wednesday. If you're new to the channel, be sure to subscribe, like, share, comment. I'm here with a quick recap of Cherish the Day. And let's just get into it. We done got skipped ahead too. Um, so this episode, Gently and Evan, they planning the wedding, you know, cake testing, picking out tuxedos, wedding dresses, the whole nine yards. Um, so the show picks up with Gently Evan doing marriage counseling at uh, with Evan's pastor. Um, apparently, um, it means a lot. It's very symbolic for Evan wedding, um, the actual ceremony in his church, um, as well as have his pastor, you know, um, you know, be the pastor that married him, I guess. And um, but anyways, you know, doing the whole marriage counseling session, the episode was pretty much themed to me that they both have to come to a realization that they come from two different worlds. So there's going to have to be a lot of compromise and give and take. So basically throughout the therapy session, the counseling session, um, the pastor basically told gently she's Evan Rib and you know, he she just kind of got to let him be who he is. And he kind of told her the same thing, but they both pretty much agreed that they both a modern day man as well as a woman. So, you know, they have no issues with, you know, things being a little different than the traditional marriage where, you know, the wife assumes, you know, the majority of the caretaking duties, et cetera. So, you know, all that kind of stuff. So anyways, um, move on. Rika, gently, they meet up. They, you know, they, you know, they talking about the wedding because the wedding is a month away. Um, this is where we find out that gently, wants to have a personal uh, sewn wedding dress, uh, some Kunta Kente cloth, you know what I'm saying? And so she gonna do her thing with that, that's when we find that out. And um, of course, Rika, she asked, you know what I'm saying, you know, how's Evan gonna feel about it, et cetera, et cetera. And so this kinda setting the table for what's gonna happen later in the episode, you know what I'm saying? Um, so anyways, moving on. Uh, uh, Evan, being as well as uh, gently, you know, they go and check out the venue for the reception. It's, it's, it's some spot in the hood that means a lot to Ben. Um, he even has his homeboy smooching his band, Earth, Earth Funk and Wind, or Earth Wind and Funk, or whatever their name was, Earth Funk and Fire, you know, come and perform uh, for Evan. Gently in uh, Maryland, which is uh, Evan's mother, to see you know what the reception, the vibe is gonna be like. And um, Jen, you know, for me, when I was watching this scene, as well as other scenes in the wedding, it felt like this wedding and also the reception was more for uh, being as well as Marilyn. I'm Evan's mom, because my thing is like, even if, you know, the vibes was there, like that band has no place performing at these two young folks wedding reception whatsoever. It was horrible. He was enjoying it. I felt like Evan was trying to force himself to enjoy the vibes, but he wasn't. And um, Marilyn just, you know, pretty much just after they stopped, you know, she stood up and, uh, she was like, so uh, where's our next appointment? Like, let's get the hell up out of here. We ain't trying to have nothing in the middle of the hood with no earth, funk, and fire performing. And so, but uh, something interesting happened. Um, I felt like in this scene, Ben and Marilyn kind of bonded. I thought maybe she was going to go as far as to try to make Ben her boo thing. You know what I'm saying? Because he started talking about a woman's touch because she asked a very important question about the reception, like do the venue, will they provide the linens? And I understand he's a man from Compton or whatever side of Los Angeles he's from, but he ain't know what linens were. And he's a single man who washes his own clothes, will do his own dishes, cook his own food. And he didn't know what linens was. I was just like, bro, like, come on now. We, we gotta do better than this, bro, 2020. So he goes on to, give a little speech like, you know, the thing I love most about women is, 
you know, they make everything feel so different, but better. It's just a whole moment between them two had me feeling like they were gonna, you know, start sleeping together, which I hope we can get some of that. You know, we need some, we need some in the show, some infidelity somewhere, but you know, that was that. So then they go cake test, uh, cake testing to Miss Jacqueline's house. Now, we all know, you know what I'm saying, somebody in the neighborhood or just, you know, uh, uh, somebody, my auntie makes great cakes. Um, they can just make great homemade cakes. You understand what I'm saying? And um, they go over there, to, you know, to, 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 to taste the cake. She has lemon cake made up and Marilyn couldn't taste the lemon because she allergic to lemon. Okay, cool, I'm with you. So then she pulled out this rum cake was like, you know, taste this. And Marilyn, she loved it. She, I, I felt like she genuinely loved the cake. But then, <coughs> excuse me, um, to me, she did what she needed to do. She was just like, okay, well, you know, we're going to go and check out some more cakes, you know, because, you know, she didn't have to say it to them. I felt like she was very respectful of what they were trying to do. Even though, you know, she has a completely separate agenda. Um, and Jack, Miss Jacqueline said that, um, nah, I'm making her wedding cake. We, me and her mother, me and her father, whoever, have been friends since forever. I'm making this girl a wedding cake. And once again, Ben spoke up and said, she's making the cake. This is not negotiable. And this, and once again, it's kind of why I felt like, well, damn, Ben, you getting married and Jayla getting married. Like, let her... You know, do her thing. You know, Evan's just pretty much playing the good light skin role. I want whatever you want, baby, et cetera, et cetera. So they go their separate ways. Evan, his mother, they going, you know, to a professional cake, wedding cake place, you know, taste cake. And gently and Ben, they stay back. And Ben gives her some advice, basically saying that, you know, y'all are from two different worlds. You know, this is in your bones. This ain't it. Even though he love all this, this is interesting to him. This is not in him. Be mindful of that. Be careful of that. That's the only way that y'all can actually make it, which made a whole lot of sense. Um, even so, you know, being and gently, they was, you know, learning how to waltz because it got to be some compromise in there. Like, if we go Dougie, we got to learn how to waltz because that's where Evan come from, et cetera, et cetera. So, you know, I thought Ben gives good advice, but then he's trying to take over. And I, I don't know. And he was doing more taking over in the mama. I just think we disliked the mother so much from the first time they met when she said that, that little slick stuff. You understand what I'm saying? That we, you know, we kind of don't even give her the benefit of the doubt, but that's kind of how it is. So, anyways. Evan and his mother, they go to a professional cake spot, um, and she basically just called him out, like, look, I know the real you. How you gonna feel when your friends from Stanford, Silicon Valley, and everybody roll up to the hood to a place that don't even have, they got dirty linens if they even got there, like, look, I don't mind being the bad guy to make sure you get the day that you want, et cetera, et cetera. And so I was happy that she called him out on that. Because, you know, light skin, which is doing too much light skin stuff. Like, don't just go with the flow because that's a light skin thing to do. Which is what he did. Like, if you're not okay, like, you know, it's okay that y'all come from two different worlds. It's, it, like, it, it really is. But you cannot be sitting up here and agreeing to stuff that you absolutely hate. For instance, that damn band. You don't want them at your reception. The venue might have been cool. <sighs> Evan, I, you know, I was happy his mama said that she'll be the bad guy to make sure he gets the wedding that she... Now, we know she want a wedding. We know this. But I was happy that she said that, and he agreed to it. He was like, okay, mom, you right. He didn't say that. He just shook his head. So, uh, nevertheless, uh, that was pretty much that. And so then we get the scene where um, Ben... Uh, Evan and, uh, I mean, being gently and uh, uh, Evan father, you know, pretty much everybody going to get fitted. The ladies going to get fitted for their dresses and the fellas going to get fitted for their tuxes. So um, right away, I thought Professor Ogilvy, which is, you know, Evan's father, Mr. Fisher was lying about being from the hood, but obviously he had a few stories to kind of validate it or either he living through somebody else, I don't know. So him and Ben and Smooch, they kind of hit it right off talking about the old days 
running through South Crenshaw, etc., etc. But I want to get to the, the meat of this. So, first of all, I want to say this. Um, when did Evan niece, uh, aka Evan sister's daughter, child, shave her head and became gay and decided to wear a tuxedo to the wedding? I thought she was just a little girl of uh, uh, episode ago last week, but that's nevertheless. So, anyways, um, Here's what here's what I want to talk about, and I'm gonna go ahead and end it after this. So, while they are looking for dresses, gently is just kind of sitting back. Evan, mom, she came in and, 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 and look. I understand, gently, gently, like look. I got a vision. Plus, I don't have these dollars. Like these, you know. After that comma, first of all, what I'm getting don't even cost. Don't even got one comma in the price. You know, this over here. You know, come on now. So, nevertheless. Gently, I mean, Evan's mother comes in trying to convince Gently to, you know, try on the dress, etc., etc. Et and then they have a real deal moment where, when uh, Gently tells, uh, well, every mom likes every mother's dream to see their daughter in a beautiful gown. And Gently tells her that my mom will not be here, but it's okay because everyone who loves, who I love, will be there. And she has a touching moment with Gently that, that, that was very sincere because she even shed it. One or two tears after what she told gently, you know what I'm saying? She apologized. She knows it's her fault. They have gotten off to a, a, a rocky start. Um, she also said that she's beautiful. She's brave, resilient, fearless, and all of those things are things that she's not. She always envisioned Evan marrying a woman uh, that was just like herself which is very selfish, and she admitted that. So I was happy to see that maybe their relationship can, you know, kind of take off now. You know what I'm saying? But we're going to see. And so Gently does go and tries on dresses. She finds a perfect dress, and then it's where all the bullshit happened. So then, you know, every mama was like, hey, you know, don't even, I'm going to take care of the price. Don't even worry about it. And so uh, the lady who worked at the, at, at the place, she was like, don't even worry about it. The dress I already paid for. Evan left his credit card on file because he knew as soon as she stepped into a place like this, she would change her, her mind and want something better. Oh, shit. See, that's why I be talking about these light-skinned fellas. They put their foot in their mouth when they just be trying to go with the flow. You just got to come on out and tell like, baby, look, I, I, I envision this. I got the cash. Like, you, I, I don't know how the conversation would have to go, but you got to be more transparent than what he was. So she get pissed off. She pull up on him. Let him know, like, be real with me. You being fake. Let me know what you don't want, what you do want, et cetera, et cetera. Long story short, they decide to go elope. They break the news to, the, you know, the family. They take a family photo, and they go and get married at some little Spanish venue out there. So it was a pretty cool episode. It was a pretty cool episode. But the moral of the story is when you come from two different worlds, you got to communicate, be transparent, which means communicate. Um, and compromise, you know what I'm saying? It can't just be, and you know, compromising is hard. You know what I'm saying? It really is, man. But um, it could be done. It could be done. But that's pretty much all I got. Um, I let y'all holler at me in the comment section below. Until next time, I'm out of here. Peace.